all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even then, the night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Search me, God, and know my heart, and lead me in the way everlasting. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Good morning, good morning, good morning to God be the glory for all the things that he does and is yet doing. Amen. We thank God for you, you and you. Thank you for joining us this morning on Morning Manor. We're glad that God is allowed to see another day, another hour. Amen. That we could honor him and show him how much we love and appreciate him. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning on this Thursday. Uh, I believe it is the 14th. Yep, it is the 14th of January. Uh, 2021. Amen. The weather here is 33. A little warmer than it has been the last couple of days, but we're glad that you guys are here with us. Amen. Do me a favor if you don't mind. Simply, if you can, share this with as many people as possible. Let them know, like Morning Man has started. Wake up, wake up. Amen. Some need a wake up call. Amen. Uh, we miss our Instagram friends, uh, but because of the format we use, it makes it very challenging um, to be able to give the uh, quality of what we're doing on both platforms or because of the limitations of Instagram. But uh, we're going to find a way to work around that as well because there's a few of them um, that usually join us every morning. Some key people, and the reason I say that because it's a connection for them to, to the gospel. That's more so for than anything else. But again, we greet you in that name that's above every name, and that's the name of Jesus. We thank God for seeing you this morning. Uh, greet each other as you come in. Amen. Let's not take anything, anyone, any situation for granted. Not in these times, not in these days. Amen. Every hour is precious. Every situation is precious. Amen. We must be very uh, diligent in how we map out our days and what we do and how we do it. Wherever you are right now, amen, we just reach you that name. Um, amen. We thank you. And as we continue in our teaching on the full armor of God, amen, as we were talking about the shield of faith on this week, amen, if you could look over, uh, over my shoulder here in Ephesians, I believe it's a 16th verse. It's the 16th verse. And it talks about, of course, it talked about having your loins girded about with truth and your breastplate with righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Then it says, above all, 
above all. And, and that's, that's a uh, key because you'll say, well, aren't all these important? Yep. They're all important. They're all, they're all important. They're really all important, uh, elements. But when we talk again to our lesson today, you are fine. You're fine where, uh, you could, you could, you could resolve a lot of issues <laughs> within yourself and in your life. If you take this particular, uh, part of your, your weaponry, uh, more seriously, amen. This is taking the shield of faith wherewith, and it's telling you why you need it, you shall be able, you shall be able, you shall have the strength, the ability to quench, to slow down, to stop, amen, um, the fiery dots of the wicked, the fiery dots of the wicked. Um, to be honest, a lot of times what we run into, <clears throat> even during this time of all this, you know, the impeachment on yesterday, every day there's something going on. Somebody said the last few Wednesdays has been something else, and next Wednesday, uh, you know, there's something else going on. But again, we thank God for you. Thank God for seeing you, Sister Joan, this morning joining us. Brother James, amen. And I pray that all of you who have joined us on this fast, who's able to join us on this fast, because everybody can't um, because of different challenges. And, and again, that does not disqualify anyone, amen. The primary goal, the primary goal is to abstain from food, to abstain from food. But this is not Lent. Um, this is not Lent. <laughs> this is not Lent. But you can... Um, choose something to abstain from if you're if because of certain conditions and situations you cannot um, not eat amen um, but you can abstain from certain things if you have uh, you can abstain from Netflix you can abstain from sports you can abstain from uh, whatever again I, I have to eat food but then I have to choose uh, what food that I do eat amen during that time so that's that's also a, a part of it as well like I indicated I said giving up a bread then potatoes and again part of that is a discipline it's a discipline and it's for health reason. I mean, it's not terrible for you or, you know, you may be indulging it, but you know, there's certain things you need to fall back on. And what this is really about is getting disciplines in my life. Disciplines are not punishment. And I was thinking about even like the word like repentance. The word repentance, uh, when we repent of something, we feel like, okay, I'm denouncing something I love. And most likely it's something you like if you don't love it. When you repent of certain things that you do, or you enjoy that goes against God's will, sometimes we feel like we're giving something up. But from a spiritual perspective, and it is not always hard to <laughs> get because we like what we like because of our flesh, is actually taking you out of the wrong door and putting you into a right door. Repentance takes you out of the wrong direction, the wrong door. You think it feels like you're going in the right direction, but it's saying, no, I'm gonna reroute you. It's almost like GPS. You're going this way, and if you're going to trust the GPS, amen, it's going to reroute you another way. It may be a little bit inconvenient for you, amen. It may seem like out of the way, but we don't know what's ahead. And I think that's the key. That's the key thing is that we got to understand that. And even um, Elder Chestnut, when you said um, about discipline and sacrifice and sacrifice, I, I, I think about it too. Um, think about how many times we have said, you know, I, I came to church, I made a sacrifice and I came to church. Does that seem like a sacrifice now? That's why some things for us, we have to be careful that we really call them sacrifices when they're really not sacrifices. When we're doing them in the beginning because it's hard, just like now, just like now, fasting seems like a sacrifice. I'm giving up <laughs> certain things, but the benefits of the end is even better. You feel like you're losing something, but you're really, yeah, you're really gaining. You're really getting, but in that moment, think about what you're, even your children, think about, think about it, your children. And sometimes, you may take things from them. And they're like, you'll punish me. You hate me. All of this, they, they throw these tantrums. And doesn't it sound like us? We're throwing these tantrums, but yet God said, I'm protecting you from something. I think about the many beatings I got growing up. I think about the punishment. I remember one time my mother put me and my brother out. It was like 12 o'clock at night because we were fighting. But she was teaching us something. There was a lesson that was being learned. We felt like we were being punished right? We felt like we were being punished from certain things. And it was a punishment. It was a punishment. It was an actual beating. It wasn't, we didn't do timeouts. Amen. You'd be fortunate if you get knocked out. Amen. And whatever they could get their hand on, they were used. They couldn't get away with that today, but they didn't do it out of complete rage. They did a lot of our love to get us to a point where we need to be. So a lot of times when we, in the beginning, we look at it as a sacrifice, but it's really not a sacrifice because right now we really realize that it's leading us to a better place. And I know, in, in, and this is why we have to fast. This is why you have to fast. Um, and fasting is not a church religion. It's not a, a something we do. Okay, we're going to fast this time. That's why many times I try to break patterns that we have. Like we were doing fasting the first week of the month. 
and it got away it got away from us but in some ways i kind of glad it did because i don't want it to be okay first of the month we're gonna do this fast because i have to do this fast no 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 it has to be something that's relational even personally uh it should not always be a church-led fast or a pastor induced fast but as you walk closer with god as you walk closer with god amen there'll be times you're gonna lay on your heart to fast abstain it may it may be different and if you're interested in getting more information about the different types of fast we can get that information for you brother elijah is very good with uh, information like that he's someone that fasts a lot and and for some of us, I mean, honestly, for some of us, especially when God deals with you in a certain way, uh, especially as a leader, uh, your fast has to be a regular part of your discipline. It has to be on your clock. It has to be, and there'd be times when God will lay on your heart, abstain. And you'll be like, well, why, why? Again, you don't understand, but I'm preparing you for something. There's something I want you, I want you to see. On Sunday, I shared about, the, when the scripture talk about the disciples, when they got upset that they couldn't cast out the spirit, and he said, why we couldn't do that? You know, first of all, uh, certain things you're not going to have because they, that it was in the presence of God. Let me just bring this chin out a little bit because it's swirling. Yeah, yeah, uh, there you go. Just want to bring it down a little bit. Um, it's certain things they couldn't do because it was already in the presence of God. They were already in the presence of God. I want you to get that. The key is fasting brings us closer to God. It brings us closer to where God is. Amen. Fasting, that's what it does spiritually. You say, well, physically, I have not changed my position. No, physically, you have not. But spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, you have changed your position. You move closer to God. You could be sitting in the same seat. You could be doing it's in the same house. But the more you fast, it brings you closer and closer. Because remember, we connect to him through our spirit. When we're fasting, it's allowing our spirit man to engage better. Amen? It allows us to engage better. We want to be closer to God. It also helps us with our belief. Because that was the problem with the disciples. Why they could not they could not cast out that spirit. It was their belief. It was their belief. And we're going to be talking about your faith today. And I'm going to tell you how important your faith is. We And there's difference between, oh, my faith as far as my religion. Because sometimes we get that twisted. It's not about your religion. It's about your faith in God. Because sometimes they say, oh, my faith. And we identify that as, for example, if you're Catholic, Baptist, uh, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Methodist, whatever. We say, that's my faith. And, and that's a, that could be dangerous too. That could be. I have faith in the apostolic doctrine. Yes, you know what the apostolic doctrine is. The apostolic doctrine is the Bible. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. I believe in the teachings of the apostles. Amen. That's simply what it means. Uh, to be Pentecostal means I believe in the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And sometimes we label things. We label things. And when we label things, it put us in a certain aisle. It's just like if you're looking for bread. It's all in the bread aisle. You, when you label put labels on certain things, amen, it kind of limit. And sometimes we defend, <laughs> we defend our religion more than we do our faith. We would defend our religion more than our faith. Well, I'm such a such. I'm a, I'm a believer. Even though I fall into the banner and how we move is an apostolic Pentecostal movement. And someone comes to the church and says, what type of church is it? I say, you come in and you tell me. It's almost like manner. Amen. You tell me what it tastes like to you. That's less important than it is that you believe God. Faith is everything that you need. Nothing wrong with it. We don't dishonor our founders. We didn't dishonor them. I understand because there was time when people got away. And it's important. I mean, it's also very important. Amen. Because we have to be careful. And I, I was guilty of this. I say, I can remember on two occasions. Well, I judge, I prejudge, Sister Joe said, I prejudge churches because of what was on the door. I really did. Uh, I was some years ago, it was some years ago, um, where I went to a church where my mom was attending. And because of the title on there, I kind of went just because it was my mom. And I said, let me go see what she's into. And I might have told the story before. I had my son, Michael. He was a he was a baby. I had him with me. So we went, we sat there. And I already did, I didn't read, I didn't prejudge the whole situation. At the end, the Holy Spirit kind of like nudged me and said, there was no difference between this church and your church. But you put in your mind, because of the name that was on the front, that there's, there's a certain way that they move. Again, don't get twisted. They don't get twisted either. Churches that you fellowship with, churches that you have certain expectations, you go there and you say, this is not meeting what we thought it would be. Amen. So we have to be very careful with that as well. And someone said years ago, if you really did a survey, and we have all these churches and all these things all over the place, within, 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 <laughs> within, um, the reason that we have all these churches with them, but it's like they say the difference between most of what these people believe, maybe one or two things. It's sometimes three. Now, 
let me let me straighten this out. Ecumenical. When we talk about being ecumenical, that means a fellowship because we share our belief system and the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's one thing. That's a deal breaker. That's something that's not negotiable. As far as being ecumenical, coming together and worshiping together. Then there's something that is community. For example, and I'm just going to use them because it's obvious, um, it, perhaps your Muslims or your Jewish brothers, right? They don't believe in Jesus Christ as being the Lord and Savior, right? But in my community, there may be an issue or something we need to address. If it's out there, we talk about dealing with the shootings in a certain city, or we talk about gang members, and we're trying to resolve these issues. I was on a call the other day, they was talking about uh, the vaccine. It was a, the mayor and the pastors and stuff. That has nothing to do with that. You get what I'm saying? This has to this has to do with our community. So in order for us to make sure our community is, is well, because sometimes your little segment can't get it done. And that's why you hear me preach, teach, and everybody should be, because if you look at the Bible, that's all Jesus talked about was the kingdom of God. Don't let that be just a phase of phrase that you hear uh, these last few years. Uh, no, the kingdom of God is how God operates and do business. Our churches and things like that is where we have fellowship at. And I talked about this last night in our new members class, well, our church membership class about, you know, you need to be assigned to a local assembly for spiritual growth, accountability, for fellowship, for growth, for commitment to Christ. You need to have a local assembly. Amen. But don't allow the walls of of doctrine, certain doctrines to separate you because what it does, it dilutes and it weakens the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Amen. Um, there are going to be certain things we're going to see different. And the reason why we have so many reformations and so many denominations, a lot of it has to do with man himself. Amen. Because there's not clarity sometimes on certain things where it's like, I believe this is this and I believe this and we do this. We have to be very careful, but let's get back to what's most important. We talk about the shield of faith. And again, it says we need this shield of faith. It's a take, which is an action word. Faith is an action word. Faith is not something that sits stagnant, right? It is it's not a static thing. It's, it don't just sit there. Faith has to have movement to it. It's a taking, taking the shield of faith. We talked about it, that it goes on your arm, but you got to lift it up. It was rounded, remember? It was rounded, and the thing on the front was called a boss that allowed you to sometimes use that as an offensive weapon, but it was really your first line of defense. And it, it was about three and a half feet uh, tall that allowed the, the, the soldier, amen, to hold it and protect them, to hold back the impact of the blows, because as you can see in the scripture, it said, wherewith you shall be able to quench, quench, satisfy, or stop all the fiery darts of the wicked. If you are feeling the impact of what you're going through, if you're feeling the impact and you're weighing it on your shoulder and you could feel this impact, check your faith. If people are starting to get on your nerve all the time, everybody, every situation, you on edge, amen, check your shield, check your shield. And as we get into this lesson, I'll help you understand. In Hebrews 11 and one, it says, now faith, that's where we left off on Tuesday, is the substance, is the thing that's tangible to me, uh, things hoped for. If I don't see it, I'll never see it. If I don't see it, I'll never see it. Faith allows me to see my future before I get there. Faith allowed me to see me walking through the door. Faith allowed to see me getting my diploma. Faith allowed to see me getting the keys to my house. Faith allows me to see myself driving in that car. Faith allows to see me having a child. Faith allows to see me getting married. Faith allows me to do that. In spite of my current situation, it gives me the hope. Without faith, I cannot reach my hope because faith is the substance of things what? Hope for. I believe God for my healing, amen? And my faith, my faith, I see myself healed. I see my children saved. That's what faith do. That's why faith, the enemy is always after your faith. Your first line of defense, if I could get that, you're going to feel these things. Even though I got other armor, boom, I'm going to feel it. There's some things you're going through, you don't have to go through. You don't have to go through. Check your shield. Check your shield. Amen. Faith is a, and it's the evidence. It's the proof of things not seen. My faith. And I take the word of God and my faith is in God's word. And God said it. I believe it. If it's your will, God, let it be done. Let it be done. Amen. Amen. That's what it is. Amen. So when we talk about a biblical definition of faith, because uh, if faith is, well, I'm going to skip that part. Romans 8, 24 and 4, 5, it says, we have, we are saved. We are saved in this hope. We are saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. What do you hope for stuff? If I say, I hope I get a pen and I have a pen. I hope I get this particular phone. I have this. I don't have to hope for it. I don't have to hope for it. And when we talk about hope, hope is not wishing. Hope is not wishing. 
Hope is, is, is again, yeah, is substance, is evidence, is proof. Amen. And and and, and here, here here's the thing, uh, uh, Sister Sheree. Sometimes people think you're crazy. They think you're crazy because of the fact of like, why are you so happy? Because I know everything's gonna be all right. Because I already see myself coming out. I already see myself here. I already see this. And, and that's why the enemy attacks constantly and try to get us and get us to let down our shield of faith. And here's the other thing. Him derail our faith. It, and I, I'm not going to blame it on the devil. Let me take that back. I'm sorry. I, I got to apologize to the devil because not always the devil. Amen. Sometimes because you put your faith in the wrong thing and you feel like you're guarded, you feel like you protect. This is fresh from, from heaven right now. You feel like you're protected, but you don't have your shield of faith in God. Uh, you have some other things. Now you're feeling the blows. So when I go through things in church with church folks, amen, when things happen, Things will go, where was my faith? Was my faith in people? Was my faith in my denomination? And will my denomination let me down? Will my church let me down? And I'm not talking about church, I'm talking about the building, the people in there. And I say this to people all the time. They say, you know what? I'm done with church. I ain't got nothing to do with the church no more. I said, okay, that happened. That's your reality. It happened. People do stuff, whether it was in the church or out of the church, because you didn't quit your job because your boss did this, but you, you left church, amen, which will save your soul. But I say, what did God do to you? What, at the end of the day, what did God, why are you abandoning God? Maybe this didn't work for you over here. But that bitterness that you have towards this institution, you have to be very careful. Amen. And sometimes you got to go revisit. Did I get off track? Did I get distracted? Did I see someone in the congregation I started liking and my focus became more about that relationship or even with my friends in the church than it was my relationship? Was it that I went to church? Amen. Because I had to usher. It was because I went to church because I had to sing. I had to play. You know, and I forgot my purpose, and that's what happened because now my faith, because if you're operating in faith, listen to me, if you're operating faith in God, you won't be so easily moved and upset. Yeah, you're going to get upset. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to get all these things are going to happen for real. Amen. But when you're praying and your faith is redirected back to God, then you'll realize it ain't about that. It ain't about that. And I mean, even if you get up and you have to preach or sing or whatever you have to do, sometimes you get in your feelings. And then you got to check that. You have to check that about why I'm afraid, why I'm getting nervous. Is it more about me or is it faith in God? That's why sometimes it's almost like you put on these blinders of faith. My thing is, Lord, I'm going to deliver this word. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say what you gave me. I, I'm not. I'm not feeling this, but I'm going to. I'm going to really say this. But hope is not seen. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we see, do not see, we eagerly await for what with perseverance. I believe it. I'm going to wait on it. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. Amen. So as we talk about this, even though it's based on solid evidence, it does not mean that faith comes naturally or even easily. It's not easy. It's not, it's not always easy because while we're in this flesh, we're going to always be challenged. Amen. So Ephesians, and then we talk about where does living, saving faith come from? Ephesians 2 and 8 says this, for by grace, for by grace, by God's unmerited favor, you have been saved through faith. I believe in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's his grace that allowed me even to believe that. You couldn't believe that without his grace. You could not believe that without his grace. Because this would not be said. He's giving you access, free access that you don't even deserve. Amen. To even have the opportunity. Even now, as we're hearing this word, and sometimes the word will weigh heavy on us because it challenges us. You should say, thank you, Lord, for every trial, every tribulation. Because again, we talk about faith. Right? Faith is not about a car. Faith is not about a man or a woman. Faith is about God. I'm going to trust you through this process. I'm going to trust you even though it looks like everything around me is falling apart. It's even though this is painful, even though what I'm going through, I don't like. It's put me in a place of discomfort. Amen. I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to trust. I'm going to tell you something. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. And that's not a cliche. I've been through many trials and tribulations and many, many circumstances that was ugly, man. I've gone through midnight hours after midnight hours. I said, Lord, where are you trying to serve faithfully? I'm talking about even as a pastor, you have to go through these things and hold on to your faith. And on the other side of faith, the Bible tells us we go from faith to faith. That faith gets elevated every time. And I'm going to talk about how that get elevated as well. So we are, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. It is a gift of God. It's a gift. You had nothing to do with this. That that you alone right now, you, you got to give, you need to get God glory right there. It ain't because of anything. You, we don't deserve this. Who are we? And that's why I tell people all the time. I, honestly, this is one of my favorite things of saying. If you really know God, you can't be arrogant. 
And I'm not talking about godly confidence. I'm talking about arrogant. If you're arrogant, and because here's the thing, you really walk with God. If nobody else know how jacked up you are and how jacked up I am and how, how we fall and how we make mistakes, but yet God covers us. God covers us. Even in your present state of what are you going through right now? And it may not be the best situation. You might have done things that was not, you know, of God's will. God yet covers us. Amen. It's no, it's no credit to your own account. Only thing, only thing God requires. There's one thing God requires of you, and that's faith. I want you to believe me in my word. First Corinthians 12 and 9 says, To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. Amen. This is where it comes from. Now, here's, I want you to hear this, this statement here, what I'm about to say. Amen. While we must believe God, while we must believe God to even begin our walk with him, after repentance and baptism, he gives us a deeper, living, growing faith through the Holy Spirit. We must believe God to just start to walk. That's why the Bible, when we get baptized, well, I can only say what we do. When we used to get back, when somebody get baptized, we used to ask them, do they believe in the death, burial, or resurrection of Jesus Christ? Do you believe? Do you believe in the death, burial, or resurrection? That's why the Bible tells us if you confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart, would you believe? Now, I know a lot of times, old school, you know, there were certain ways that we did certain things to say that people were saved. Amen. We're not talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. We're talking about being saved. When you make a, the Bible says you make a confession, which simply means I agree with what's already been said. What the word of God says about me, I believe I am a sinner in need of a savior. Amen. I'm, I'm born in sin and shaped in iniquity. I believe that just as well. And when you believe that, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. When you do that, he said, you shall be saved. You shall, shall is a continual process. It does not mean that I got it all together. It's an ongoing process. But along the way, unfortunately, if you pick up religion instead of spirituality, you pick up religious habit. If you just fall in line, and I know this is what we do, we have the habit of a conformity. We end up having it. We look at the deacons and we look at the ushers and we look at the missionaries. I'm going to do what they do. I'm going to just mimic what they do. But mimicking is not a relationship. Uh, one thing that was really in my spirit before this pandemic was, was about the familiar spirit, the familiar spirit. And I'm going to tell you, that thing reared its head really, really, really bad in the last year and a half. half. A familiar spirit is not necessarily the spirit of God. It's just a, a spirit that's familiar with one another, who spirit uh, familiar with certain activities, and they, they would they would gravitate to one another, amen. And they take on a form of godliness. They would take on a form of godliness. There's no power thereof, amen. It looks like God. It sounds like God. But when you get up close in person, you realize, oh, I don't think God is in this because it's not bearing the fruit of the spirit. That's the key. I don't care that sometimes that's what happened. All of us, all of us in this room right now have been tricked by that. You see someone or something or certain situation, oh, that seemed like God, because you could create these atmospheres. And I think it was, uh, we was on a conversation the other day, I think it was Pastor Moody's uh, uh, thing he had going on. And they were talking about, you know, now online, people could create any Vegas experience you want. You'd be oohed and ah, said, wow, look at the bells and the whistles and look at all the things that are going on. And But you don't know what's behind that curtain. It reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. You don't know what's behind that curtain. So you have to be very careful. And that's why even... As you walk with God during this season, allow the Holy Spirit to work in you to help your spirit of discernment. And those who may not be familiar with the spirit of discernment is mean in your spirit, you're able to perceive certain things and your perception is not really based on nosiness. Amen. It's, 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 it's discernment. And that discernment don't do anything but to help glorify God. It's not for you to know and just tell people's business, amen. It's really to warn you and sometimes to warn others. And sometimes in your discernment, amen, you're not really sure because you see one thing and you want to see something different. Oh, God. You know what the Spirit is telling you, but you want to see something different. And I'm going to tell you this. If you stay too long, your discernment becomes numb. No, your discernment don't work as well as it should because you allow yourself to be too uh, familiar, too familiar, amen? And that's a rough place to be because now when it's time to separate, when it's time to move on, amen, it becomes very, very difficult, amen? Real talk, we, we stay around, because especially us, we are loyal people. We, 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 we are some loyal people. We are loyal to a fall. And that goes back to some old history too. Why are we so faithful Sometimes even to abusive situations. Amen. It may not be physically, it could be emotionally, it could be a mental, it could even be spiritually. And we'll yet stay because it looked like God. It sounds like God. But when I leave, I don't feel like I've been in the presence of God. 
That's more important. I'm not, I'm not talking about instruments playing and we got, you know, I to go, I love the shout. I love the praise God. God knows I do. I listen right now. I, 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 I think I'm going to just get, get hire me some musicians and go to church and have church. Amen. But, but when Dow Coley had a song, go, that's why I love this man. When the music stopped, when the music, if you don't know that song, I'll play it for you next week. When the music stopped, what's going to happen? When the doors of the church close like it has, amen, where is the presence and the power of God in your life? Where is your faith? Let me get to this because I have approximately 10 minutes and I, and this is very important. When we talk about we must believe and after we to begin our walk, to get into the door, right? That's get you in after repentance, after baptism, after you've done the repentance again, redirects you to the right door. Redirect you. It does not take away from. Amen. Amen. It does. It gives us a deeper living, growing faith. A living, growing faith. It gives life to my faith. Uh, First lady said this a while ago. We go from believing to faith to trusting. We go from believing to faith to trusting. That's how my faith grow up. It starts as a belief. It leads me to faith, and my faith becomes the thing that takes me. Then I get to a place called trust. Trust is that place where you feel abandoned. Trust is that place where you feel cold. Trust is that place where I'm not sure what God is doing right now, but I'm going to trust you, God, because I believe you. And the faith of what I've already experienced will be the thing that allows me to trust you in this moment. Some of us right now, I know for myself, I'm trusting the Lord. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, your comprehension. And in all your ways, he shall direct your path. And that also means make your path straight. Trust the Lord. Whatever you're going through right now, I'm at the last check of my unemployment. Trust the Lord right now. I don't know what's going to happen during the summer. Come on. Trust the Lord. We got to, we got to go from, we got to go from believing or having belief to, to faith, to trust. We have to, we have to go from it. Let it grow up. Amen. And guess what? It don't stop. I got trust. Nope. Let's recycle it. Now I believe God in this area of my life. Now I have faith in God in this area of my life. Now I'm going to trust God with that. Uh, some of the things that's near and dear to your heart, especially again, your children, your loved ones, that's a very difficult thing. So why is a shield? Why is a shield associated with faith? Amen. Remember when we talked about Daniel and, and, and them and said in Daniel 3, 17, 18, he said, if that is the case, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, right? He said, and he would deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, but if not, see, this is faith. Faith means if it don't, and I say this all the time, <laughs> it may not work in your favor, but it's really working out for your good. Some things seem like it's not working in my favor, but it's working out for my good. He promises that. He promises that everything will always seem to work out in our favor. What I mean by that, in that moment, in that moment, again, it may not seem like, but I got to trust God. I got to trust God. Yeah, you shed some tears because you're grieving because part of that is he's separating you from your flesh and you don't know that's what it really is. He's really separating you from, even when you pray a prayer and listen to me, listen to me. And I say this to the church. I say this to the church, Sister Sherry, all the time. When you pray a prayer, God don't just answer your prayer. He's answering your prayers. He's answering your prayers. So part of this right now, what you're going through, he's answering your prayers. I know. And sometimes you got to go back and reflect. Say, Lord, what, what happened? You, you, this was like I was working out. But what he's doing, he's answering your prayers. He got locked up. She got locked up. This ended up and you lost a job. He's answering your prayers. Because all things, see that, now that's the word. All things are working together for my good, not in my favor. I didn't want, I didn't feel like it, I didn't feel like going through this process. I didn't feel like going to unemployment. I didn't feel like doing none of this. I didn't feel like looking for another apartment. I didn't feel like going through this process, this procedure. I didn't feel like going through this. I didn't feel like get, going, getting a car to go call this boy on, on this car. I didn't feel like doing all that, but it's working out for my good. He said, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your God. Let it be known. Let the record show that we do not bow down. Amen. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, brother James, God will get the glory out of this one way or another. If it, listen, some, some, listen, listen, sometimes you got to take the hit for the kingdom. You got to take, you, you listen, you, we want God's blessing. We want God's anointing. Some things that we go through is for the glory of God. He will put you on front street because <laughs> he know you can take it. He know you can take, it. I don't know if Elder Chestnut remember this. I believe I preached his message that highway. And the message was, can God trust you with trouble? Can God trust you with trouble? 
Can God trust you with trouble? Look at your life. Yes, he can. Because you didn't bend. You didn't bow. You didn't fall apart like some cheap patio furniture. You might have cried many nights. You may have to walk the floor. Oh, I feel the presence of God right now. Hallelujah. You've gone through what you've gone through. You had tears in your eyes where you could not see. Your heart was hurt. You had that feeling in the pit of your stomach, but I did not break. If God don't do it, I know, I know, hallelujah. What was meant for evil, God has turned it around and using it for your good, amen? The enemy, the enemy, he's firing these darts. He's going to fire. That's why he said no weapon that is formed against you. Listen, the weapon is going to form. They're going to, they're going to write up. They're going to write up the charges. It's going to, all that's going to happen. But I'm telling you right now, we're going to win. Hold on to God's unchanging. If you hold on to God's unchanging hand, it's going to work out for your good. It's going to work out for your children's good. Amen. He's going to, because he said, if he not, he said, I will not. There's some things I refuse to do. There's something. And, and many times I'm telling you, Tijan, I, I'm talking about recent, like, Lord, this don't make no sense. Lord, Lord, I, what did I do? Didn't we, this don't, this don't, but, but we also got to go back and count up <laughs> reciprocity. We got to make sure, we got to make sure some of this is just stuff not coming back on us because of things that we've done. But I'm going to tell you the glory of God and the beautiful thing about the love of God. I'm going to tell you, God is an awesome God. He's, he's wonderful. Even in our folly and even in our foolishness, even when we reap what we've already sown, it's a difference when you, you reap that under grace. It's a difference when you reap it under grace because what should have happened, that's how loving God is. What should have happened, and we complain about, oh God, why did you allow this to happen? Why did you allow this? It should have been worse. That's why do you think some of your friends that you were cool with and you grew up in church with singing the same choir in the same section, you usher together, but yet certain things, they went a whole nother way? That's, that's reason enough to praise God. God is a faithful God. So we talk about this shield. I'm going to talk about a few aspects of the shield before we, we wrap up completely. Amen. Uh, a shield guards. Again, the shield guards. The shield guards. Amen. And I'm going to tell you why morning man is, is, is important. I may go a little bit over uh, to bear with me because I just want to make this last point after this. The shield guards is when our physical shield protect us physically, our faith protects our spiritual life. Our faith protects our spiritual life, even in the middle of physical trials. Your shield of faith was protecting you spiritually. When Satan, um, with these three Hebrew boys, when he attacked them and he used Nebuchadnezzar to attack the values and the belief, because that's most time. Again, what is your faith? What is your faith in? Oh, they talking about my church. They're talking about this. They talk, no. We in the wrong. That's you. A lot of things is you. It's, it has nothing to do with God and protecting God. When the last time you protect the glory of God? When the last time you made a decision to protect God's glory? But we make decisions based on what the enemy is doing to us. And we react to it. When, and again, you don't have to react. Put up the shield. Put up your shield of faith. I'm going to trust you. You got to be standing like this. I'm going to trust you, God. You, I'm standing by. You're trying to hit me, but it, it may bounce back a little bit, but it not hit me. Because remember, the shield always, also, even though I have other protection, this is the first line of defense. This, I, I don't want my righteousness under attack all the time. I don't want my righteousness. I don't want, I don't want my helmet of salvation. I don't want those things attacked all the time. If my faith can allow me to be protected, I won't be fallen and be so weak. Because after a while, guess what happens to your righteousness? What happened to your righteousness? If your righteousness is constantly being beaten on, beaten on, and beaten on, and being challenged, eventually you're going to give in to unrighteousness behavior. Why do you, again, go back. If your tongue been slipping and speaking in other tongues that do not glorify God, if you find yourself with a constant attitude all the time, you find yourself blacking out after two words, check your shield. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? And again, during this pandemic, during this quarantine, that because we've not been in church, it seems as though our faith has been challenged. Our faith in God. Amen. We're looking to get back in the building. Amen. So we have to have some resolve because even if God don't do it, let me say something. Even if God don't do it, he's able to raise it up from the dead. What do you mean, pastor? What I mean by that, it seemed like, oh God, it seemed like the enemy won. It seemed like they got the best of them. I'm quite sure when Jesus died and went to the grave, the enemy's like, they were, they were celebrating. We won. We won. We've got the best of them. He said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm able to raise you from the dead. I'm able, any situation that's of God, amen, that, that he didn't bury, he's able to raise it back from the dead. If it's part of your good, if it's part of your good, he's going to raise it back up from the dead. Amen. Ephesians 6, 16, again, our scripture for today, above all, take above all, above all, 
above all of this, take up the shield of faith. Amen. A shield also deflects. It also deflects. It also deflects. Satan is always hurling fiery darts of fear, doubt, worry in our direction. Here it comes. Boom. Yeah, you down and out. Yep, that just happened. I know you sick, but I don't care. Uh, they're going to let you go. It's going to happen. He's always, always, always sin. But the only time he could hit us is when we let our shield of faith down. When we stop believing God is in control. When you stop believing that God is in control, you're letting down your shield. You're letting down your shield. That is, it's working out for our good. And whatever that happens, the ultimate best of everyone involved, however little seem to work that way. Amen. So it, it guards, it, it deflects. And it's, it's our first line of defense. It's our first line of defense. It allow us not to be overtaken from the rest of our armor being battered on. But when we work, when we have our faith in God's omnipresence, we have our faith in God is strong. Amen. We will not allow doubt to creep in. I don't want doubt to come around that shield. I don't want. I don't need doubt in my face. I don't need. Listen. I don't. Maybe you that safe. I'm. I don't have that much strength. I don't need to be contemplating and going back and forth. I don't need a whole lot of worry. And I've been in situations where, you know, I've gone through, uh, I want to say, not a new trial, a situation I had never been addressed before. Amen. And and what happened was, excuse me one second, let me just straighten that out. And what happened was it attacked a part of me that was my ego. It really was my ego. And it had to do with a job. And I started trying to fix it myself. And because I started trying to fix it myself, here comes worrying. I started worrying more and more. And it was keeping me up at night. And this was never my nature. It was never how it was. But this particular area, the enemy knew try, how to try to infiltrate. Amen? A shield could incapacitate as well. A shield could incapacitate. It could, it could slow down your enemy. Your faith could cause the enemy to back up. Amen? But let me go. Shield is your first line of defense, right? It's your first line when the rest of us, it protects the rest of our armor. Even though it protects us, it intentionally blocks it in everything with our head. Amen? When our faith in God, it's making it impossible for these things to creep in. In Matthew 4 and 10, let me give you the scripture. Then Jesus said, I have approximately three minutes. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall not worship the Lord your God and him only. You shall serve then the devil left him and behold, the angels came to minister to him. Remember even with Peter, when Peter, that, I didn't want to use that scripture, that was a different scripture I want to use. When Peter was on the water and God told him to come out, he said, bid me to come if it be you, Lord. And when he came out and did the winds and the waves and everything was blowing, and once he started paying attention to his situation and took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. It's the same thing with us. When we let down our shield, then the enemy's able to penetrate and, and, and get behind and cause us to be hurt. Amen. But the shield can also incapacitate. When Christ was being tempted, that's what the scripture I was using for Matthew. When Christ was being tempted by the devil in the desert, right, on his fast, he took the word. He took the word, his faith in the word, and he commanded the commands of God, and he repelled Satan to back off. Sometimes you got to do this. Remember in the front of that shield, that brown thing I said called the boss? That thing was, it could incapacitate. Use your faith to make the enemy back off of you back off, get doubt, make doubt, get off of you. Amen. But the last part I want to talk about this shield, and this is important, even us gathering here on Tuesdays and, and on uh, Thursday mornings, or those who are part of whole life, our Sunday, as well as our uh, Bible classes or whatever we gather, what the soldiers would do with their shields, because of how they were shaped and because of the size, this is so important. And this is why you can't walk with everybody. You can't be with everybody, especially people that don't have faith. Don't share your dreams, your ideas with everyone, especially if they don't have faith. People that have faith are not dream killers. People that have faith are not dream snatchers. But people that walk in faith, they promote other people's dreams because I'm secure in my faith in God. I'm focused because faith gives you focus. What it allows you to do, and this is what the Roman soldier would do because as the enemy's firing at them and they're trying to move forward, amen, they would take their shields get side to side, and they would create what's almost like a, a, a turtle shell or an armor. And then you have some soldiers, their responsibility was not to hold their shield this way, but to hold it this way. So that way, when the darts was coming over the top, they was able to guard them as well. So that's what you have to be with people, individuals that believe God, no matter what. That they're able to take their faith, they're, able to raise it. they're not saying, you know what? That, 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 you know, you're doing too much. You, you know, it don't take all of that. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It takes that and a little bit more for me. 
I don't know what it takes for you, but for me, it takes all of that. So it allows us to be protected. Amen. That's why in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, where he said he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, teachers for the equipping of the saints for the ministry of God. Amen. Uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come together in the unity of what? Of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to the perfect man, to the measure, statue of the fullness of Christ. Amen. But what we want to do is be able to protect and shield ourselves from the things that the enemy is trying to come at us with. Amen. So again, let us guard ourselves. Let us come together. Please pray for one another. Let's pray for one another over these next few days. Amen. Um, we don't know what's going to happen around here, but I believe in God. I believe the reports of God. I look at clips from last Wednesday, the Wednesday of last week, and I'm looking like still shaking my head. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But why are we surprised? Why are we shocked? Amen. This is what happens, amen, when people are not lining up with, with God's will. Amen. But again, uh, if you want to be a supporter to the ministry, again, if you need any information, you have any questions about the fast, any questions about the fast, please contact me. Please contact me or one of the ministers, the elders, and we will help you walk through it. If you have not joined, if you desire to join, um, if you have other questions, um, we are here for you. Amen. Again, um, we thank you for joining us this morning, and we'll be back next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we will be back. Amen. And we're going to move on to our, our last segment of this, uh, of the arm of God. And I pray that it's been a blessing to you. Amen. But continue to really, really, really pray for one another. Amen. Again, before you leave, please share this. Amen. That someone, someone, somewhere can receive this word and their lives can be changed because of the word of God. Not because of me, not because of you, but because we have spoken the word and we have done what the Lord has told us to do. Amen. Raise your shields. Don't let your shield down. I know you're going through difficult times. I know it's being challenging. Amen. But again, if you find yourself getting weak, amen, get yourself with a brother or a sister. Amen. And get shoulder to shoulder. Get shoulder to shoulder. And say, guard me. We don't need to have a conversation. We just need to stand in faith together, stand and we guard ourselves, not allowing the enemy to wear us out. Amen. And again, again, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Because you're trying to save everybody. Even as a pastor, I had to learn that. Pastor, you can't, you can't be there for everybody. You got to be there for who God's assigned you to. Amen. And do what you call it because you got to guard yourself. You're so busy trying to help everybody else, you forget to cover yourself. Amen. Love you guys. I appreciate you. Have a blessed day on purpose. And we will see you guys on next week. Or some of you will see you on Sunday. God bless. Sunday, 12 o'clock. Amen. If you're able to join us, 12 o'clock. If your service is over, if your service is over, if your church is having service, be in your service. Amen. Amen. Stay on your service. Stop clicking and jumping all over the place. Amen. And you wonder why. Never mind. Amen. But be in your service. We at 12 o'clock. So we could be we could be the mid the midday sack. Amen. Usually about an hour, hour 15 at the most. But it'd be a good word. God has a word for us on this Sunday. God bless you. Have a great day.